Here we go. Good afternoon and welcome to another edition of the Cancer Education Series. This Cancer Education Series is brought to you in part by the Holmes Murphy Foundation. I'm Chris Goodale. I'm the Executive Director of Above and Beyond Cancer, and it's my weekly privilege to introduce Dr. Dick Deming, who will talk about our program this evening. Dr. Deming? Great. Thanks, Chris. Uh, yeah, we're going to have a fun pro program today. Uh, We've got Carissa who is speaking. Uh, Carissa is, uh, has spoken to us before. She is a real health expert. She graduated from Ankeny High School, um, went to the University of Northern Iowa, where she majored in health promotions with a uh, emphasis on wellness and fitness. And she's currently working at the Mercy Health and Fitness Center, where she not only teaches individual classes and group classes. She also does individual personal training, and she is a great motivator and personal coach. But before I bring uh, Carissa on, let me just tell you about what's coming up uh, next month. So we got uh, a lineup of speakers set up for next month. The first Wednesday of the month, uh, that's a week from today, August 5th, I'll be giving a talk. And the topic is cancer care during the COVID pandemic. Um, go over some facts and figures and how the COVID pandemic has affected individuals getting their cancer care and how it has also affected individuals and families uh, in relationship to getting cancer screening and also to uh, the stress and financial difficulties that many people are expect, uh, experiencing during the COVID pandemic. The next Wednesday, August 12th, Allison Pete, who is a certified mindfulness-based stress reduction instructor, is going to talk about mindfulness for stress reduction. We know that uh, many types of cancers and other chronic illnesses are caused by or worsened by stress. We all could uh, do ourselves a big favor, not only by eating healthy and exercising, but learning how to reduce stress in our lives. August 19th, the third Wednesday of August, Greg Fuqua, who is a licensed mental health counselor and an art, art, artist and an art instructor, is going to talk about the need for connection and expression, art as therapy for cancer survivors. Uh, I'm excited to hear about that. We have had some programs with Greg doing art as therapy for cancer survivors. And uh, this will be um, an, an opportunity to learn what it can do, how it works, how it's done, and hopefully we'll get another program set up. The last Wednesday in August is Alex Kennison. He's a licensed um, mental health counselor, uh, does marriage and family counseling and he works at, um, at Mercy. He does provide also counseling to our cancer survivors. He's gonna give a talk on August 26 on setting healthy boundaries with loved ones. Um, as all of you know, going through the cancer journey is not a solitary uh, uh, procedure. It's a, it's a team sport your family, your loved ones are with you, and sometimes that can develop uh, some tensions. How do you get along best with your loved ones as you're going through a difficult time? So that's what we have coming up over the next four Wednesdays. And let's see if uh, Carissa has joined our team here tonight. She was having a little bit of technical difficulty getting her computer going. So I don't see her right now. Chris, are you still with us? I am Dr. Deming. I'm actually on the phone with Carissa trying to get this ironed out. Okay. <laughs> so the, this is the value of live uh, entertainment, I guess. <laughs> this is live, folks. This is not, <laughs> not pre-recorded. So. Uh, we've got 
Carissa's slides all ready and ready to go for the uh, presentation. Yep. She was just having some connectivity problems getting on, so we'll have her on in a minute. Uh, while we're waiting for Carissa, um, let me remind everyone that we have our weekly um, bicycle club, if you will, and you don't have to pay any memberships. Anybody can be a member of the club and you can show up any Tuesday night. Uh, they meet at 5.30 at Waterworks Park for a bicycle ride that's an out and back at your own pace. No one gets dropped. So that's um, every uh, Tuesday. We also have some special events coming up uh, for late summer. So we have uh, a bicycle camp out. So it'll be a one day bicycle ride from Des Moines up to the campgrounds in Sailorville. We'll uh, camp in tents, have a camp out uh, appropriately distanced, taking, making sure to uh, take all the precautions um, in regard to the COVID virus camp overnight and then we'll pack up our stuff. You won't actually have to carry your camping gear. There'll be a van that will carry the gear. Uh, we'll just pedal about 30 miles or so up to the campsite, camp overnight and pedal back the next day. Um, Chris, do you have the date of that um, camp, Viking camp? It is August, um, let me see. Yes, Dr. Deming, the, the bike and camp event is, starts on Saturday, August 8th at 1 o'clock at Bike World West and goes, uh, and then we'll, we will return there about the same time, maybe between 1 and 2 on Sunday, uh, August 9th. Great. Thank you. And then the, the last uh, event I want to talk to you about that we're doing will be in September. And that is uh, the 18th, Friday the 18th through Sunday the 20th. And we're going to travel up to northeastern Iowa, the beautiful hilly northeastern Iowa. Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay. Thank you so much. At the Yellow River Thank you. Uh, recreational area and also at the Effigy Mounds. We'll do some. Um, Native American healing and learn about that up at Effigy Mounds. That is September 18th through the 20th. So those are all available and you can go to the Above and Beyond Cancer Facebook page or website to learn more. Without further ado, um, <laughs> we'll turn over to Carissa Rainey. Yes. And again, her topic uh, tonight is about easing into an exercise program if you've been away from one for a while. So Carissa, it's, it's all you. All right. Um, thank you guys so much for being here. They always think that um, us millennials are, are, are always good at the technology portion of things. Um, but I must have missed a bit on that one. So thank you guys so much for being here. My name's Carissa, as Dr. Deming stated. Um, and I am a personal trainer. A certified group fitness instructor um, and then also a fitness specialist for Mercy One Health and Fitness Center um, located in Clive. And um, I've been working at Mercy One for about a year now. Um, and I've it actually it's kind of crazy that it's been a full year that I've been working with them, but um, it's been so enjoyable. And so I'm just so excited to be able to talk to you guys about such a fun topic as well. Um, so we're going to talk about easing into exercise, um, how to kind of incorporate more exercise in your lifestyle, um, whether you are already an avid exerciser already, um, and just kind of want some more tips and tricks on how to stay motivated and keep consistent with it. Um, or maybe you were an avid exerciser before COVID-19 or before um, we had a little bit of a break and maybe you want to uh, kind of get back on the wagon and start getting back into exercise again. Um, or you've never exercised before and this is just kind of something that you are wanting to kind of take part in. So um, we're gonna talk about easing into exercise, but the first thing that we're gonna talk about is why exercise is so important. Um, so why is exercise important for us? Uh, exercise strengthens our muscles and our bones. It helps 
sar prevent sarcopenia, which is actually the deterioration of your muscles as you get older. Um, and so that's gonna help prevent, exercise is gonna help prevent sarcopenia. It improves your sleep, it strengthens your heart and lungs, um, and then also decreases your risks of chronic diseases and illnesses, such as heart disease um, and, and other illnesses. Um, and these are kind of things that I think a lot of people kind of have embedded in their brain of why they need to exercise. Uh, a lot of times people think like to live a long, healthy lifestyle, exercise is so important because of these things. Um, but I like to focus on a few new um, ideas of exercise, uh, what exercise has to offer that a lot of people don't actually realize. Um, and it's actually that it increases your, releases your serotonin hormone, which is your happy hormone. So it's like an instant mood booster. Um, it also decreases your cortisol hormone, which is your stress hormone, which is probably something that we could all use right now. Um, I know I definitely can. So um, exercise will help with that. It's an instant stimulant. So it gives you the um, energy that we usually turn to like a cup of coffee for. Um, exercise will give you that same amount of energy. It also helps day-to-day -day activities become a little bit easier, um, whether it's reaching on top of the shelf for a soup can or walking up a flight of stairs. Exercise is going to make all of those ta daily tasks a little bit more easier for you. Um, and then later on, Exercise also helps prevent injuries, um, increases flexibility, and then it also will help kind of overall improve the quality of life. So lots of different things um, that exercise has to, has to offer. I like to focus on um, not only like the long-term benefits, but also the short-term, because these are the benefits that you'll feel right after a good workout. Um, so why else is exercise important? because we as humans are designed to move. Um, if you think about it, back in caveman years, they weren't sitting on the couch watching Netflix um, or reading the newspaper or um, sitting at their desk typing away. Um, we are designed to move. They were hunting, gathering, um, running from their predators. And so um, it's kind of, kind of wild to think that we've kind of adjusted or shifted our way of life. Um, and actually, sitting is now considered the new smoking. So um, just how smoking used to be a health crisis, it's actually sitting now because we do a lot of sitting at our desk typing. Um, we do a lot of watching TV. Um, and I'm, I'm an advocate for all of those things. I love watching Netflix. Um, but we do a lot more than our body wants us to. So now that we kind of focused on the importance of exercise, we have kind of like that knowledge of why it is, it's, why it's so important for exercise um, to be a part of our lifestyle. We're gonna talk about some tips and tricks on how to ease your way into an exercise routine. So the first tip that I have for you is to start slow. Um, so any time that you're getting into, first getting into a routine or first starting a routine, um, it's important to start slow um, because it's going to help not only prevent injuries, but also it's going to be more sustainable and consistent for you. Um, so those are kind of a couple of things to think about when you're starting a routine for yourself. So for example, if I took about a month off from exercise, I, my old self, which is kind of like the all or nothing mentality where I have to like be in the gym for an hour or two. Um, would probably come into the gym after a month off and be like, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to get a full hour in. I'm going to lift the same amount of weight that I lifted before. I'm going to go all in and make up for the lost time that I had. Um, but we want to start slow um, because realistically, if I went into the gym for an hour after being off for a month, I am going to be so sore that the next couple of weeks, I'm not going to want to step into the gym or do an at-home workout. Um, and I might have injured myself. So it's always so important to just start slow and then progress. Um, and then also remember that something is better than nothing. Um, and so it kind of takes away that all or nothing mentality. Just doing something around the house is going to add up and make you feel a lot better. Um, so you want to also allow for proper rest days. So when you first start an exercise routine, if you are coming from not working out at all, um, then I would suggest starting like one to two days 
um, of one to two days a week and then kind of progress and add on. Um, if you kind of had a routine and you're starting that, to get back into that routine, I would say two to three times a week, um, two to three times a week, but alternate them to where you have a little bit of a break in between each day so that your body can um, recover. Um, then also watch out for overtraining. So some examples or signs or symptoms of overtraining would include severe shortness of breath, pain or discomfort in your chest, neck, back pain or jaw pain, um, feeling nauseous or vomiting, or severe muscle cramps and joint pain, and then also cold sweats. So those are some kind of things to um, be on the lookout for if you're afraid that you might be overtraining. Um, but always start slow and then progress. So the second tip that I have for you is to identify your barriers with exercise. So what is stopping you from working out? Maybe you already work out on a regular basis, but what are, what's stopping you when you don't go to the gym or when you don't get in that workout? Um, what is stopping you from getting started into a routine? Um, so what is kind of your barrier there? And I kind of, I would like you guys to actually, if you have a piece of paper on you, just kind of jot down what your barrier is with exercise, kind of brainstorm, or you can even make like a mental note and um, just kind of write down what might be the barrier that's stopping you. I kind of came up with four that I can kind of relate to on a personal experience. Um, and so the first one that I came up with was time. Um, I think that's a big one for a lot of people. Um, now, granted, when we closed our facility, I, um, we had two weeks to clean and then I had some time off. And so time was definitely not the reason why I was not working out. <laughs> um, and it might be the bottom one, which is motivation, but, um, but I just did not find myself wanting to exercise on a regular basis. And I also kind of gave myself some grace. I was like, you know what, this is okay. I've got a lot of time on my hands, but I don't really want to exercise. And so it's okay to give yourself some grace. But um, so that was, that sometimes is a barrier for people though. So if time is one of your barriers when it comes to exercise, um, write down, prioritize it and write down when you are going to do that workout. Make it a non-negotiable appointment for yourself and it'll be more likely to get it done. Um, because right now with exercise or just kind of in general, I think people either during this time have a lot of time on their hands or they don't have any time and they are swamped. Um, and so it kind of goes either or. So if you can just plan it out um, and make it a priority for yourself, it will get done. Um, the next barrier that I come across in the fitness industry all the time is knowledge. Um, and I can actually speak for experience on this one as well before I was even a personal trainer um, I would walk up into a gym or upstairs into a gym and I would see all these cables hanging around I would see bands and dumbbells and big machines and I did not know how to tackle that and I I would I I understand where people are coming from when they say gym intimidation I don't know if you guys have heard that term before but that is realistic to me because I did not know what I was doing in there. And so um, not, it can be overwhelming for people. So if you're not quite sure what to do, um, whether it's at home or in the gym setting, um, hire somebody that does or ask a friend that might be, might go to classes frequently or might have a little bit of a health background um, or even myself, you can always ask my, myself or a personal trainer. Um, and so, Ask somebody that does know. I know, um, I'm not sure if a lot of facilities do this. I think they probably do, but at Mercy One, we have an orientation. So you just set up an orientation with us. It's 30 minutes, um, 30 to 30, 45 minutes. And we basically walk through each machine, show you how to operate them correctly and safely. Um, we get your proper seat settings and the weight needed. Um, so you can just go in and adjust that machine. Um, and then we're also always there to help too. So find just, it never hurts to ask, um, especially when it comes to fitness because it can be very overwhelming at times. Um, so that's the second barrier. The third one is injuries and limitations that you might have. So this might be something that is stopping you from incorporating exercise in your lifestyle. 
um, whether it's like a shoulder injury or you had knee surgery or hip surgery, um, I would ask a professional to kind of go about creating an exercise program for you that fits best for you. Um, but no matter, I always tell people, no matter what limitation that you have, everyone can do something. And so finding kind of like your niche or your um, exercise that speaks to you um, and is going to be safe for you as well is important. And then the last one is motivation. And this was the biggest barrier for myself. Um, I don't know if anyone else can relate to this, but motivation is not constant. It is not ever going to be a steady line. We're not always going to be motivated to do something. Um, as you can probably tell, it's kind of like a roller coaster and it comes and goes. And so we're not always going to be motivated. Um, but, and we'll kind of talk about motivation a little later, but creating a routine um, and also just kind of taking action and getting that task done, getting that exercise into the day because you know it's going to make you feel so much better. Um, and so kind of when you write down the, your barriers, I want you to kind of write a solution to that barrier. Um, so kind of write down a way that you can go about the barrier that you have and how to tackle that obstacle. So the third tip that I have for you is to consult with a professional. So when you are starting your exercise routine or your exercise program, um, consult with a professional. Ask maybe your doctor first, um, see if there's any limitations or injuries that you might need to be cautious of, um, and then work around those. Um, or hire a personal trainer or um, even physical therapy could help you kind of go about finding some exercises that might work best for you. Um, just to prevent injury and also so that exercise is more of a consistent and sustainable part of your life. So the next tip I have for you is to move naturally. So a lot of times people often think that when you are starting an exercise routine in order to reap the benefits um, and see a difference in your body, whether it's your body or your health or how you're feeling or energy levels, a lot of time, pe times people think that they have to camp out in the gym for hours and hours and hours. And that is not the case by any means. Um, every little bit counts. So if you move naturally, whether you are going to go to the grocery store and you live maybe like a mile away or a couple miles away, maybe ride your bike to the grocery store or um, walk there or um, take your go for hikes or um, just move a little bit more throughout the day. So get some more steps in, be on your feet a little bit more, um, whether it's like cleaning or cooking around your um, house or um, even like grocery shopping. I know right during this time, um, it's safer and a lot easier and more convenient to order your groceries online. And so that is, I've done that a couple of times and it, I feel a lot safer when I do that. Um, so if you don't feel comfortable with going into the grocery shopping, um, order your groceries online. Online, But if you do, that's going to be a good way to kind of get some more movement throughout your day. So even like taking the stairs instead of the elevator when you have like your doctor's appointment, um, little things will add up. And I actually like to keep a Fitbit on me. Um, I know some people have like Apple watches or even a phone pedometer that you could download on your phone. And that way you're just kind of aware about how many steps you're getting. Uh, I know over the break that we had, I, I know I didn't, I think I got maybe like 5,000 steps here and there. I still was out and moving a little bit, but not as much as I usually am. I was a little bit more aware though, because I had my pedometer. But I also built grace in there and I was like, it's okay because we're going through this and um, I'm not super motivated to work out and that is completely fine. Um, and so it's just kind of having that awareness of how many steps you're taking. Um, it will help you move a little bit more throughout the day. And there's also a nice little tip on your um, Fitbit that usually lets you know every hour to get up and moving. So it's kind of nice. Okay. So the next tip that I have for you when you are incorporating more exercise into your lifestyle is to find something that you enjoy. Um, so I want you to kind of brainstorm and think of some exercises that you maybe do already that you love or something that's kind of stuck out to you where you're like, that actually seems really interesting. I really want to try this, but I haven't tried it yet. Um, and so I want you to actually, if you have your piece of paper out in front of you, I want you to write down 
maybe one or two things that have stuck out to you that you really want to try um, for exercise. And personally for myself, I, um, I've always wanted to try goat yoga. And so I've never tried, I've never tried it before, but it looks super fun. So I might have to hop into class if there's any offered right now. Um, but that is something that has always stuck out to me. And it just sounds so goofy and fun um, and kind of just carefree. So <laughs> that has been one of my interests. But um, kind of think of some different things that you enjoy doing. Also, um, maybe there are some fitness classes that have kind of stuck out to you that you want to try. Um, right now at Mercy One, we are still offering cycling. Um, we're doing cardio strength, mind body, or yoga. And then we also have aqua classes that are all available. Um, and a lot of facilities have those as well. Um, so kind of you can pick some classes that you want to take. Um, hop in a class if you want. We're definitely taking more um, safety protocols with our classes. So like we're limiting 16 people in our cardio strength room. Um, it's a pretty good sized room. We have dots on the floor to space everybody out. Um, and then the all instructors wear a mask and we clean um, all the equipment as well. So um, little tiny things, if you feel comfortable with trying a class, um, those are kind of the protocols that we have um, put into place. But you can do so much at home. You can go out on the trails. There are a lot of different options um, for you. And then also through Above and Beyond Cancer as well. Um, if you go onto their Facebook page, this is where I find a lot of their events that are going on, or Dr. De Dr. Deming and Chris do a great job of informing you of the um, different events that are coming up. Um, but you can do different classes um, through Above and Beyond Cancer. You could go to abovebeyondcancer.org. Um, they all have some great, great activities to get involved with. And a lot of them are outdoors, all social distance. Um, and I know, I think I saw you guys did like paddle boating or paddle boarding. Um, you guys have yoga quite often. Um, and so Above and Beyond Cancer has so much to offer. So take advantage of those classes. Um, you won't regret it. And then also doing things like walking, golf, strength training, um, it will all add up. So just find something that you enjoy doing. So the next tip that I have for you is to create a routine or a habit um, around exercise. So especially if you're going from not exercising at all, it's going to be hard to incorporate or more difficult um, to incorporate exercise in your regular basis. So the first tip that I have is, when we kind of talk about this, is planning and prioritizing um, and making it a priority in your schedule. So just like coffee date, a coffee date with a friend or um, a doctor's appointment takes priority in your agenda. Pick a time that works best for you and plan it out in your planner. Make it a non-negotiable appointment for yourself. Um, and this is kind of where that barrier of time comes into play. So if you have it scheduled, um, you're going to be more likely to accomplish it. Um, I always also talk about the power of habits and how each day um, that we live, we are always partaking in certain habits. So if we can kind of tweak our routine just a little bit, um, it's going to make the healthier choice the easiest choice. Um, it's going to set us up for success um, as well. And so doing a 30-day challenge. So let's say you pick, you say, okay, on Monday, Wednesdays, I'm off at 4 p.m. after work. I am going to head right to the gym at 4.15 I'm going to get in um, a 30-minute workout on Monday, Wednesdays. So you would take, make it a 30-day challenge. You're going to say, okay, Monday, Wednesdays, I'm working out at 4 p.m. Get a big calendar and just mark each day that you end up working out. Um, and then it's going to be that satisfaction of drawing that line through that box and telling yourself that you got it done. And then after a month, you can be like, I worked out Monday, Wednesdays consistently. And then after the month, you're going to probably feel like when Monday at 4 p.m. rolls around, you're going to be like, I think it's time for my workout. I'm going to go work out now. Um, and it's just kind of funny how habits kind of take place in our life. So make it make the healthy choice the easiest choice. Um, another thing that you can do if you are really pressed for time in your schedule is something called exercise snacking. And unfortunately, it's not as fun as it sounds. You're not like snacking and walking at the same time. Um, but exercise snacking is something that you can do 
you can do, you can break up your 30 minute workout, let's say. So let's say you do 10 minutes in the morning, you just do a kind of a body weight circuit. I'll show you some exercises that you can incorporate um, later on, but you just do maybe like some body weight squats, um, some push ups on the wall, and then you do maybe some walking lunges and maybe a little bit of core or balance um, with that. And then do that for 10 minutes. Maybe around lunchtime, um, you go for a walk for about five to 10 minutes. And then at night, maybe do the same circuit for 10 minutes or go for another walk or do something, um, play with your kids or um, do something active. So it doesn't have to be like an hour blocked off in your schedule. Um, you can do exercise stacking. And that is something that I've been doing frequently and it has made a huge um, difference. So. So the next one is to take action. So kind of like how I talked about earlier, um, motivation is not constant, unfortunately. We are not always gonna be gung-ho about our goals. We're not always gonna be super excited about getting into the gym or working out at home um, or doing things that are active. So it's important to kind of take, this is a tip that I used quite a bit over the break that I had, um, but you just have to take action. So um, one thing that I kind of incorporated was the 54321 rule. And um, I actually learned this rule from a podcaster. Her name was Mel Robbins. And she talked about the 54321 rule. So she used this to get up in the morning um, because she would always snooze her alarm every single morning um, and would always miss her workout. And so it's, it's super goofy and it, it's foolproof if you use it right, um, but it, you literally just lay in bed, the alarm goes off, and you count down five, four, three, two, one, and you shoot out of bed, um, and it just sounds, it's funny, but it actually is foolproof if you use it right, and so that is something that I will do sometimes, and why, why it's five seconds is because our brain can actually convince us not to do something just within five seconds. Um, and so instead of hitting that alarm, you just shoot out of bed and you go do your workout or you do the task that you've been wanting to. Another thing that I, or another tip that I, or tool that I've used um, over this break is a five minute rule. And so uh, sometimes when we look at an exercise program or if we're trying to get in some physical activity, we always say like, instead of an hour, I always say like, okay, I'm just going to go, I'm not feeling motivated right now, but I'm just going to go outside. I'm going to walk for maybe a half mile. I'm going to maybe walk for five minutes or do something for five minutes. Um, Cause anyone can do anything for five minutes. So sometimes when you're out there um, for myself, at least I'll be out walking on the trail and it's about half a mile in and I'm like, well, I might as well just finish out the mile probably. And so uh, sometimes I keep going or at the half mile or at five minutes, I'm like, hey, you know what? I'm going to turn back around. Um, that was good for today. And that is perfectly fine. So um, I like to use that rule because it gets you, gets you out there. It gets you, whether you have like an elliptical at home, gets you on the elliptical or the bike, or it gets you moving a little bit. Um, then you can kind of decide after five minutes because chances are that five minutes, your heart rate's going to be elevated. You're going to be feeling a little bit more of a mood boost. And you're going to feel a little bit more excited about what you're doing and a little bit more happy. So um, it kind of, you kind of just pick if you want to continue or not, but that has worked really well for myself. Um, and then also just give yourself some grace, even if you don't, if you do not um, get that exercise or that workout in for the day, just don't be so hard on yourself. Sometimes we are, our hardest critic um, when it comes to those things. So just give yourself some grace. Um, you will get it done. So the next tip that I have for you is to make exercise as convenient as possible for yourself. Um, so kind of like how we talked about planning um, and prioritizing it in your schedule, um, make it as easy as possible on yourself to go to the gym. So whether it's laying out your clothes the night before, um, this is something that I do on a regular basis. Um, I always will pick out my clothes the night before, even when I wasn't um, working and when I didn't have any appointments or anything going on, I would just get my clothes, my workout clothes on right away. And then I would go work out. So setting out your clothes and 
a night the night before. Maybe pack them in your gym bag if you're going right from work right to the gym or um, if you're going to be at home um, just so that you have your workout clothes on already. Um, choose a location um, that you feel the most safe at and also the most comfortable and um, the most convenient for yourself. So if it's a gym, maybe don't pick a gym that's like 30 minutes out of your way um, because it's going to be a lot easier to convince yourself to turn back around and head through a drive through or something probably on the way home. <laughs> Just speaking from experience there too. But um, so choose a, a location that's a little bit closer. Um, if it's at home, you want to make sure that you're limiting distractions. Um, so working out at home is actually the, the most convenient it, it could be. Um, but it's funny because I used to tell myself, I'm like, I'm not an at-home workout person at all. Um, but I was finding that I was not limiting my distractions around me. And that's why I was not an at-home workout person. Because I would do maybe like 10 squats and I'd be like, oh, well, the dishes need to be done. And then the laundry also needs to be done. And I just would not get any workout in. And I would completely forgot, forget about it. Um, and so limit distractions block off that time for yourself um, to get that exercise, those exercises in. Maybe it's a few, like a quick circuit, um, but limit the distractions around you. And then if you need accountability, you can hire a personal trainer. You can just shoot me an email and be like, hey, I worked out today. Um, you can phone a friend or have maybe a friend work out with you if you're like out outside um you guys could both do like a body weight circuit and maybe walk around a little bit still enforcing social distancing um you could have your spouse do it with you or your kids and make it a little bit more fun um exercise can be can be fun it can be a kind of like a group activity um and that will make it a lot more enjoyable and sustainable as well so the last tip that i have for you guys is to stay positive um, so stay positive throughout your journey. The health and wellness is not just about the destination, um, but the journey as well. And so when you're finding exercises that you love to do, um, when you are working out um, at times that are the most convenient for you and making it easier on yourself, um, that's when it's going to be a lot easier to get done. But also, kind of like I said before, give yourself some grace. We are human. Um, it's okay if you aren't getting in as much exercise as you used to um, or as you would like to. And don't compare yourself to other people. You might be like, well, Susan's getting in like seven days a week and she's going to run a marathon at the end of the month or something. So, And everyone is kind of in their own journey. Everyone has their own relationship with exercise right now. And so just kind of recognize your own. Um, and just focus on what you're achieving and the things that you can control. And don't compare yourself to the person that you were um, like a couple months ago. You could be like, well, I used to walk five miles every single day, and now I only do, no, now I don't even do one mile. Um, focus on the here and the now and focus on where you're at, what you can control, and what you want to focus on um, for yourself. All right. So um, now we are going to go ahead and get into some exercises. I'm just going to show you guys um, a few different exercises that you can do. And um, I'm going to just kind of tilt the screen down just a little bit. And we will um, start with some cardio. So if you guys want to, you can find um, some room in the room. This is completely optional, um, but just kind of space out a little bit. And you guys can do these with me or you can just kind of watch. Um, but this presentation was sent out, I believe, to you guys. Uh, or Chris did send it out to you guys. So um, you should have all of the kind of cues and everything. But I'm just going to tilt my screen down so you guys can see me. And the first one is um, a walking high knee march. So you might not be able to see my head. It might be a little cut off. But you're just going to bring your knee up and then the other knee will follow and you can kind of pump your arms. Um, so typically I would say do about 20 total um, each, do 20 total or you can even break it up and go into seconds if you want to. Um, it's gonna help kind of loosen up the hips. There's a couple options with this one as well. So this right now is the one that I'm showing you that is the low impact option. But if you wanted to add a hop and bring the knees up, uh, I'm gonna be out of breath after this presentation. Um, but there's a couple of different options. So 
time they march, um, or you could also do jumping jacks, which is um, another cardio form. And you could do a low impact here where you just drive the heel into the ground, bringing your arms up. I'll set that just a little bit more, there we go. Or you can do a high impact option and add a hop. So about 20 total of those, um, or you could even go for seconds. So if you're doing a hit circuit, you could do 30 seconds on, 15 second break, um, 20 seconds on, 10 second break, or 45 seconds. You can kind of mix and match and make it what you want it to. So that's just kind of some stationary cardio that you can do. Oh, I'm out of breath. <laughs> so now I'm gonna show you some body weight exercises that you can do anywhere um, at home. So the first one that I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna tilt this camera over to the wall and I'm gonna show you some wall push-ups that you can do. So um, over here, you're just going to have your hands about shoulder width apart, and then you're gonna be on your toes, and you're just gonna bend at the elbow about 90 degrees, and then push away. So you can do about 10 to 12 of these if you want to. Um, you can kind of pick and choose your reps. Another version of push-ups is just the original version on the floor, um, you can be on your toes or on your knees as well. Um, so those are push-ups that's gonna work the chest area. The next one I'm gonna show you is tricep dips. So this one actually is in a chair or a stationary object. And you're gonna be seated on the edge of the chair for starters, and then you're just gonna walk your feet out a little bit. Your hands are on the chair. And then you're just going to drop your hips down, bending at the elbow at 90 degrees, and then push straight back up. So bend at the elbow at 90 degrees, and then straight back up. So these are tricep dips. Um, if you want a little bit more challenge, you can walk your feet out a little bit more as well. That's going to create a little bit more challenge for you. And now I'm going to show you some chair squats or body weight squats. Um, so you're going to still use that chair and you're seated on the edge of the seat. Feet are about shoulder width apart, and you can have your hands um, out in front if you want to, or across the chest. And then you're just pushing straight up through the heels of the feet, squeezing the glutes at the top. And then you're sitting your hips back nice and easy, like you're sitting in a chair, and then all the way back down. So this is just kind of a form of a squat. Um, you can do regular body weight squats as well. So you'd have your feet shoulder width apart and then you sit your hips straight back, weighted on the heels, and then come all the way up and squeeze the glutes at the top. So it's gonna help strengthen your glutes. It's gonna help strengthen your quads as well. Um, the next one, I'm gonna point this camera down just a little bit so you can see my feet. We're gonna do calf raises. So you can have with weight or without, you can hold on to a chair if you'd like to as well, but you're just going to lift up onto the toes and then right back down. So lift up on the toes and right back down. You should feel um, that kind of the um, calf working in that calf muscle there. Um, you could also, if you want a little bit more range of motion in the ankles, you could take it over to a step and do those on a step instead. So now I'm gonna show you some balance and core exercises that you can do in um, your own home. So um, I like to use a chair for these ones. It's completely optional though, if you, would, if you want to omit the chair, but we're gonna take the chair out in front. And what we're gonna do basically is stack, we're gonna take our right foot in front of our left. So this is called a tandem balance. So we're gonna take our right foot in front of the left, and then you have your core is tight. It's almost like you're walking on a tight rope. Um, your core is tight, shoulders are down and back, and then you would hold this for about 30 seconds. Um, so I always try to kind of look at a stationary object, but balance is so important because it's gonna help with fall prevention. Um, and that's something that we all can use in our lives. So if you, even if you're like washing dishes or brushing your teeth, this is a great exercise that you could do while you're just kind of doing those tasks. 
Um, then you would kind of, after 30 seconds, just shake out your leg. And then you're gonna take your left hand in front of the right. So we're gonna have a soft bend in our knees. Take the left hand in front of the right foot. Oops, there we go. And then just hold your balance. Um, core is tight, chest is down and back, shoulders are down and back. Um, so this is a balance move that you can do 30 seconds on the left, 30 on the right. And this is something that you could do every day. Um, and then shake it out. And we're gonna do a single leg balance next. So single leg balance, you can have a chair to kind of um, hold on to if you'd like, but you're just going to have a soft bend in the knees and you're putting all of your weight on your left foot. So your, all your weight is on your left foot and you're gonna hover your foot. Um, and then you don't have to hold on to the chair if you don't want to, but this is kind of like a level up to that tandem balance that we just did. So this is kind of the next step up if that tandem balance was super easy for you. Um, this is a good way to kind of crank it up a notch. And then you're going to rest. So you can kind of keep track on your watch if you want to. Um, that's usually how I keep track of my time for um, exercises that I do, but you could use a phone or even a clock. So we're gonna do our right foot next, so soften the knees. And then we're gonna hover our left foot above the ground. And if you wanted to, you could kind of do some like ankle circles, um, this is still pretty easy. You could um, kind of just pump your foot back and forth if you want to do. So you can kind of get creative with it. And then you would just rest. Um, so those are some balance exercises. And now I'm going to show you some core exercises that you can do from your chair. So maybe you're at the office and it's a lunch break, or um, maybe you are at home um, at the dinner table or something, um, but you can just kind of sit on the edge of the chair and we're doing seated bicycles first. So you're gonna have your hands behind your head. You're gonna sit up nice and tall and then you're just going to crunch forward, taking the left elbow to the right knee and then relax. And then you're gonna take the left, the right elbow to the, or excuse me, right elbow to left knee and then left elbow to right knee. So you're just sitting back and then crunch. So I would do these for, I typically do my core exercises for third, like 30 seconds. Um, you could even do like 45 seconds if you wanted to, or you can count each one and do 10 each, 10 to 12 each side. So that is one core exercise that you can do in a chair. The next one is just seated crunches. So you're still on the edge of your chair. Um, you're sitting up nice and tall. You have your hands across the chest and then you're just gonna slowly come back and just lightly tap the back of the chair if you can and then slowly crunch forward. So you're keeping your core tight the whole time. Um, you're squeezing your tummy and then exhale all the way through. So those are just a few um, core exercises that you can do at home. All right, so I threw in some resistance band exercises. Um, I don't know if you guys, if any of you guys have a resistance band, but I'll kind of show you. This is the one that I am using um, today. It's just kind of a standard, um, it's called kind of like a TheraBand. You can find them at like Walmart, TJ Maxx has a bunch of them, um, Target, Amazon. You might be able to find them a little bit easier than you than maybe like a couple months ago. Um, but I have seen them around. So I think they must have like fully stopped them. I, I'm not quite sure, but it doesn't hurt to check if you don't have one, but I'll just show you some band exercises for today, um, just so that you can get a few more resistance um, exercises under your belt today. So the first one is reverse chest fly. So I'm gonna point this down just a little bit, sorry about that. Um, but you're gonna have your a soft bend in the elbows. So you don't wanna lock out your arm, you wanna soft bend in the elbows. You're gonna have your palms away from you and then you're just gonna open up the chest and then bring it right back in. So slow and controlled. Now this band is a light band that I have. Um, they come in different colors and um, resistance as well. Um, you can usually tell by the thickness of the band what resistance it is. And then this one's labeled light. Um, and this is just kind of a green band, but I would recommend doing about 10 to 12 reps of these ones. Um, the next one 
is band bicep curl. So I'm going to go ahead and tip this down just a little bit. So a band bicep curl, um, you're going to have your foot on top of the band. You can have one foot on or two. If you have two feet on, it's going to be a little bit more resistance for you. So you can kind of decide um, which one you'd like, but you're going to have your palms facing up and then you're bringing it right up to shoulder height and then right back down. So you're keeping tension on the band the whole time. You want to make sure that the band doesn't snap down on you or anything. Um, you are in control of the band. So these are just some band bicep curls that you could do. You can mimic all of these exercises as well um, with dumbbells. If you did like bicep curls with dumbbells instead, um, just kind of using what you have on hand. Next one is band rows. So I'm tipping this down just a little bit more so you can see my feet, but a band row, um, we're gonna have one foot on again, and we're gonna actually fold in half at the hips. So our hips are gonna stay high. Our back is flat, our shoulders are back. Try not to round them. Um, we're gonna keep our back flat, and then we're pulling our elbows back alongside the body, and we're squeezing our shoulder blades. So this is gonna a great exercise for back working your lats, so you're pulling back, squeezing those shoulder blades, um, and I would say about 10 to 12 reps of those. And then the last one is a band squat. So this is gonna be a body weight squat, but your feet are on top of the band, just to add a little bit more resistance. Feet are about shoulder width apart, and then you're gonna sink into a squat, and then come all the way up against the band, and then squeeze your glutes at the top. So down, and then all the way up. Um, so those are just a few exercises that you can do um, with a band for resistance. I'm going to lastly show you a few stretches that you can do. And you can do these at home, um, maybe like during commercial breaks or if you are at the office. It's always really good to get up out of your seat and start moving a little bit. So I'll show you a few stretches here. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to head over to the wall again. So I'm just going to tilt this over and show you a chest stretch first. So chest stretch, we're gonna have our hand horizontal um, up against the wall. So we're just gonna bring our hand horizontal behind us, and then we're gonna open up our chest on the right hand side. So we're gonna open and just kind of turn away. You should feel a stretch right in this chest or the pec area. And these stretches you wanna hold for about 30 seconds each. So then you would just relax, drop your hands, you'd hold it for 30 seconds. Then we're doing the other side. So we're gonna have our left hand horizontal and you're just kind of turning away from the wall and opening up the chest on the left hand side this time. And then the next one is a shoulder stretch. So shoulder stretch, we're just gonna have our arms out and then we're taking our right hand across our left arm is coming up and underneath. So up and underneath, hugging into that elbow and then just rolling out the wrist. You'll feel that stretch in the shoulder area, um, but if you want to, if you do do a lot of typing, I would recommend opening, closing the hand um, or rolling out the wrist. We go clockwise and then counterclockwise. Um, so just kind of getting a little bit of wrist mobility um, then also a stretch in the shoulders. And then we'll do the other side. So we're gonna open up our chest. We're taking our left arm across and then right arm comes up and underneath. So you're kind of just giving yourself a hug after this great workout. I'm definitely sweating already. <laughs> and hug it in and then roll out the wrist clockwise or counterclockwise and switch directions. And then open and close. So about 30 seconds for stretches. And then I'm going to show you some lower body stretches that you can do um, at home as well. So these ones do require um, a chair. Some of them require a chair. So I'll kind of show you. The first one is a hamstring stretch. So you're going to be just like how we did seated crunches. You're going to be on the edge of the chair. And then you have your right foot out, so right leg is, is straight. Um, you're gonna sit up nice and tall, and then you're gonna inhale in, and then exhale, lean forward, 
and then you should feel that stretch in the back of the right leg. So it's kind of right in that hamstring area. Um, you don't have to reach. You can reach for the shin, ankle, or the toe, or you can just go right to the knee. Um, whatever feels comfortable for you where you're not experiencing pain. You might feel a little bit of a stretch and a pull in the back of the leg, but you don't want to ever feel a sharp pain. And then this is one of my favorite ones. And then we're going to come all the way up. And then we're going to switch legs. So take that left leg out in front. Inhale in. Exhale, lean forward. And just stretching the back of the left leg. And just hold that here. And um, so you would hold that for 30 seconds. I don't think that was 30 seconds, but um, but I'm going to show you a quadricep stretch next. So a couple different options for this one. Um, if you would like, you can do a quadricep stretch where you pull, you reach for the left foot, um, holding on to an item if you need to, um, just for balance. You can hold on to a wall as well. But you're pulling that left foot up and in. You'll feel a stretch in the front of the thigh or the quadricep. Um, then you hold that for 30 seconds. You can also do this one laying on the ground. Um, then you would switch your legs. So pull that foot up and in and um, hold that for about 30 seconds. You'll feel a stretch in that quadricep in the front of the leg. And then um, the next one is still a quadricep stretch, but this is for if you aren't able to kind of grab the foot from behind you. Um, this is just kind of another safer option that you can do that you'll still feel a stretch in the hip flexor and then you'll also feel a stretch in the quads. So you'll have something in front of you um, to hold on to, whether it's like a kitchen counter or something like that, but you're just going to take your left foot on top of the chair. Just make sure you're holding on to something in front of you. And then you would go ahead and switch legs. So you would take Standing up nice and tall, you take your right foot on top of the step and just kind of feel that stretch there. Um, if you're not feeling a stretch in this, this one, you could find maybe a taller chair to put your foot on top, or you could just go right into the quadricep stretch that I showed you originally. And then you would go ahead and relax after that. Um, and so those are just kind of some ideas um, of different upper body, lower body uh, band exercises that you can start doing um, all from home and you don't need, you need little to no equipment at all. Um, if you have a chair, you can do these exercises. Um, and if you are looking into getting a band, they're super cheap. Um, it's just kind of a good way to build more resistance, um, but you don't need any equipment at all. Um, so you can kind of take those different exercises that I gave you and you can kind of mix and match. You can make them into a workout that you want. Um, so kind of customize your workout. So maybe um, a good way to format an exercise or a ex uh, exercise routine is maybe do two upper body, two lower body exercises. Um, then maybe throw in a balance move and a move or maybe a cardio move and a core move. Um, and so that's kind of a good way to format. But if you're doing like two, and you can do those two to three times a week, you can do the same routine and then just up the reps or up the amount of time that you do them for, um, or maybe up the resistance if we're using a band. Um, so yeah, you can kind of just take, pick um, and choose and then work different muscle groups as you go. But this is kind of a good starter um, for creating a workout at home. So um, I like to end my presentations with a couple of quotes. Um, so the first one is to do something today that your future self will thank you for. Um, and then a year from now, you will wish you had started today. Um, so I hope that you guys can take some tips and tricks from this presentation and start to get a little bit more movement in your day-to-day -day life. Um, and so I hope this is helpful for you. And feel free to contact me. I'll leave this um, right on the screen here. You guys can jot down my email if you'd like to, if you want to reach out with any questions, comments, or concerns that you might have. Um, but yeah, I look forward to um, hopefully seeing you guys very soon. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, Carissa. Thank you. And
thanks for everyone for joining us and hopefully you know before too long we can get together in person again yeah so uh, thanks thanks carissa and thanks everyone and i'll see you all next week for if anyone wants to uh, share this um with others, we will put this on our website and you can uh, see Carissa's talk or others can visit it anytime they'd like. Thanks a lot. Thank you, you so much. Week. Thank you everyone. Bye. -bye. Bye.